Today's teardown is just one of the ways I can show my appreciation and say thank you for all of the support, the comments, the emails, the packages, the, the letters you guys write me, and the general automotive camaraderie you all have shown me over the last several years of doing this YouTube thing. So I wanted to do something for Thanksgiving and understand that's not a worldwide thing, but I want to show my thanks and gratitude to you all and I wanted to do something different outside the box and today's teardown we're not going to be finding destroyed engine parts or even transmission parts well maybe we're going to tear down the very first EV drivetrain that I've had in the shop ever I, I've never had an EV on the table it doesn't really fit on my stand this is the drivetrain out of a 2012 Nissan Leaf and they're hard to sell, which is how I got it. I, I, one of the yards I deal with quite a bit had a bunch in overstock and they said they were tough to sell. So I shot them a cheap offer. I don't really stand to make anything on this. This is not for me to part out and sell parts from, although maybe I can sell some of the parts from it. I'm not sure. So we're going to tear this thing down. And my goal here is to not destroy anything. I don't want to break anything. I'm going to hopefully be able to get this all the way torn down, not just split between transmission and motor but to get everything apart get the armature out which might be a fight this should be very interesting this apparatus produces 107 horsepower 207 pound feet of torque which doesn't really sound particularly exciting however i have driven nissan leafs is it, is it leaves leafs leaves whatever the plural of those vehicles are i've driven several of them and i can tell you with enough effort you can convince them to do dumb hood rat stuff like blowing the tires off. They are a lot of fun to drive if you don't drive them like you want to take care of it. Regardless, this is not a review of how good or bad those cars are. I know they suffer from battery degradation and all kinds of other issues. I've taken some stuff apart on the bottom of them. They rust really bad. But that goes for a lot of small economy cars for that era. This is just about tearing this down to see what it's made of. The very first thing we're going to do is remove the AC compressor, which has an electric motor as part of it, because otherwise there's no way to turn it. And it uses a Torx bit. We have this harness here. All right, this is gonna take a minute. These connectors are Nissan. They're like part Nissan, part Dodge, and France and stuff. The only reason I mentioned Chrysler is I think this thing is loaded up with 13s and 18s, not Nissan sizes. Also, it has these locking tabs in the connectors that are a, a lot of fun. I guess I could just pull this with the harness. That doesn't hurt anybody, right? Oh, no, there's a separate harness. Who came up with these connect? Ah, oh, there we are. Those are some very beefy, very, very beefy connectors. That was easy enough. So here's the AC compressor, and this has uh, an electric motor inside of it that spins the compressor. This doesn't run off a pulley or anything like a conventional ICE vehicle. It's pretty neat. Not sure if it's got any value or not. Also doesn't look like it was capped, so hopefully it's... Got no debris in it. Let's go ahead and buzz this bracket off with the 16 millimeter headed bolts. Why? We're stuck on this bracket. Fixed it. All right, I'm going to fight the rest of this harness off. I think I'm just going to zip this bracket out with it. I have no idea if this has any value, so I'm going to try to be careful. Uh, something else worth mentioning, I think. I've noticed a few comments lately about people saying they've been unsubscribed from this channel. Uh, I can't really verify whether that's true or not, but several people have made comments like that and they, they're blaming YouTube for that. I, I, I have no actual concrete evidence of that, just what the comments are saying. So you guys might want to check. Of course, I'm never going to ask that you guys do that because you guys can all think for yourselves. 13 on a Nissan. No. Now I'm going to focus on removing the power harness, which this is a three phase motor. So you can see there's three legs here. It's AC motor. We're going to remove this cover. 
So I think the bolts lay behind that. Actually, maybe I'll remove these. This one's already been loosened up. Because I'm not quite sure how this comes off. Did that help me? No. Back to this side. These go all the way through, maybe. We're just gonna start zipping all the bolts out. Ah, uh, something's gotta get here. Well, there's one more bolt. I don't know if that's gonna help us. This is the oddball fastener. You need a special tool to get this one off. Very special tool. Not everybody has these. They, they are not a, a Nissan special service tool. It's a tamper-proof Torx. I know it's a tamper-proof Torx. All right, let's see what happens when I start prying on stuff. Oh, I think, I think we've done a thing. There we are. Ooh, there's wires and stuff that looks important. So here's where your phases connect. We'll get those zip loose. Oddly enough, these are 12 millimeter bolts. And it comes right off. It's a little rough for wear, but it might still be good. Now I have a couple more brackets to take off. These are 18. Not a Nissan size. At this point, it is time to separate the motor from the gearbox. It's not a transmission. It's a transaxle, if anything. We've got some bolts that run along the perimeter on this side, and then we'll flip it around and get the others out. All right, we'll spin her around. Now there's this suspicious looking black cover I feel like there might be a bolt behind it. There isn't. So I think we can start to pry this thing apart. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Don't, don't, don't answer that. Okay, here goes something. Got a little blue on the task. Look at that. That was really easy. I mean, it's not totally apart yet, but... That's all there is. Is that it? That's the uh, armature shaft, or the input shaft. Crankshaft, if you will. You probably won't. I don't see any damage I didn't expect there to be. This, this unit only has 69,000 miles on it. Nice. Oh, we're draining stuff. We're leaking. We're making a mess from the transaxle. So there's the motor. And let me go get something to soak up all this fluid. At this point, I'm going to take this transaxle, this gearbox, and I'm gonna drain it for a minute because it's still got fluid in it. We'll let it drain so we don't make a mess when we crack it open because we are going to take it apart. A question that I can foresee being asked in this video is how much does this weigh? Because people always talk about electric cars being heavy because of the batteries, but what does the motor weigh? What does this unit, as you see it, weigh? We are going to find out right meow. This can't be too heavy, right? It ain't that light. All right, I have my scale zeroed out. Well, hold on, what the? Now it's zeroed out. It's trying to cheat. Let's see what this little thing weighs. Hundred and twenty two pounds. That's a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Now I've got the transaxle drained. We're going to set that on the scale to see what that weighs. Because you guys are gonna ask. That's 
57 pounds. So 180 pounds-ish, 190 pounds. I can't math, I cannot math. Next, let's get this thing split open. It's just a ring of bolts. How bad could it be? So there's a ring of 12 millimeter bolts. All right, now we just have to split the case, right? Um, well, this is kind of crusty. There definitely are places to pry, but... Oh, we're moving now. The question is, do I take it off from this side or do I take the other side off? It also doesn't really weigh a lot. So prying on it is uh, a challenge. Let's take this off, see if that helps us. I don't think that's gonna do a single thing for us, but we're gonna do it. Maybe an exercise in futility. If we can get this off. We don't really want you working on this. Never stopped us. Yeah, the nipple seems strong. You know what, let's, uh, let's just give it a couple taps. It's gonna come apart. We have some tools that will do that. There's a little bit of separation over here. Oh, I think we're getting places. We're going places and seeing things. Oh, now my middle name is Progress. Is it ready to lift? Or did it just fall back down? Come on. That's probably something to do with the range actuator here. Might be some detents I'm missing. I don't know what I'm doing. You guys should already know that by now. Oh, that, that is the feeling of success. Oh, I definitely split that the wrong direction. Oh, there's stuff falling out. Oh, that's just bolts. Well, there we are. That definitely was the wrong way to do that. Should have taken the other case off, but we're not in any worse condition than we were before. Here's your parking pole. There's spring. It's a bunch of nasty looking fluid. Gosh, that looks terrible. So the fluid looks really dark, but when you put a light on it, Sparkles! I did not expect to see any kind of debris or sparkles in the gear oil, but here we are. Now, I don't know where that came from. I don't see anything that would have a clutch-like material in here. This is all really simple. There's not a whole lot to this. The thing about this and other electric vehicles, though, is that people are under the impression that they have zero maintenance, which is not the case. It may not have the same type of maintenance schedule that a combustion vehicle would, but you still have to take care of it. Which is why when I see comments of, what are you gonna do when electric cars are everywhere? Uh, I'll still have broken ones to tear down. They may not be as exciting, but uh, by the time there are no gas engines out there, uh, I don't know that I'm gonna be doing this. I may not even be breathing. A little bit of wear on the spider gears. And for you 240 guys, this is where you're gonna wanna weld them up. Like, right, I'm just, I'm just joking. Don't, don't weld a diff on a front wheel drive. A little bit of grease. So it all looks really simple. There's not a lot to go wrong in this, but you still gotta change your fluid. And here's your 
shift selector maybe i don't know what this went to i think that's what this was spring loaded it looks like an electric motor that controls that all right the following that i'm going to do is going to be really dumb because you really should not take these apart in fact they have special tooling to keep you from taking them apart i have the i have the tools now I'm going to remove this cover, which uh, this may or may not come off easily. I might not be able to get this off. I'm not going to go crazy and try to break this thing just to get this apart. The armature, which is the shaft, is probably not going to come out tonight because uh, I don't have that kind of tooling here. I mean, I have a loader. I know I can get it out, but uh, they're very dangerous. They're very heavy. The magnets are very strong. And we're just going to take this cover off, hopefully, just to look. We're just going to look. Just a little look. Just not like LS can bearings, just a look. Now, I am saving all the hardware in case this goes back together and somebody wants this for some crazy project. I don't think anybody's fixing a Nissan Leaf. One of these would have to go bad. So we're just going to pry on this a little bit. It seems loose-ish. Loose oh yeah, it's, it'll come off. It shouldn't, but it will. No. So this area seems to be on the taut side. But lucky for me, there is a place to pry on. Seems like there might be something Let's just give it a little little tap, just a little, yeah, like, like that, just a, a little assist. Excuse me. All right, so it's coming apart all the way. I don't know what this is going to, what's going to happen here. Um. There's not like a snap ring or anything in there. There's a bearing. You know what? We're going to spin this around before we get any much crazier. We're going to zip some stuff out of here so we're not pulling on anything that's going to break anything. Because I think that the shaft is coming out, which this may not actually come apart at that point. We'll see. Let's just get in here with a 10. Go crazy. A 10 millimeter socket is what I'm talking about. A little sub harness here. I don't know if that helped me at all. And I don't know if that did anything. But now we're going to flip it around and continue prying on it. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh boy. Uh, it's coming out with the armature. And that's kind of scary because uh, whew, I should not be doing this. Let's keep going. I'm scared. I'm scared. These magnets are no joke, guys. I mean, maybe I have nothing to be afraid of here. And I'm. It's strong. So this is the current situation. As you can see, the armature. This is all coming apart at one in one piece. I don't have a, a bunch to pry on. I mean, I don't know. I'm getting it. I didn't know blue had it in him. But beyond this, I, I got to get some wood to, to readjust what I'm prying against. I don't really want to do any damage. The goal of this is not to break it. This is, this is going to work. This is my idea. Let's try prying on the bottom. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we only have like a foot to go. <laughs> That's not fun. It seems fun for you, but it's not fun for me. Yeah, start to suck it back in. I feel like I should stop. I'm sure there's somebody out there saying, what are you doing? That's dangerous. You're right. 
This is dangerous. Um, but I do have an idea. Yes, I have a, a scissor jack here. Now we're just gonna put a little pressure on this and then we're gonna pry on the other side. I could do two scissor jacks, but that would require me to have two scissor jacks. <laughs> I don't think this is going to come out, guys. Let me go get another scissor jack. Okay, this is the probably one of the dumbest things I've done. And I know I might be making a bigger deal out of it than I need to, but we're just gonna walk this back and forth with some scissor jacks. It's like a press or a puller, pusher. And this is gonna get the job done, I think. I don't wanna do too far one direction, it'll put things in a bind. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna clear the table this area. This is so dumb. Maybe it's not. Maybe it'll be just fine. Um, I did it. All right, I'm gonna try to pull this. Okay, I have no idea what's gonna happen here. We're going to Give me that back, please. Give me that back. This isn't so bad. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Well, I got it out. I did not expect to get that done today at all. I didn't think that was gonna come out. I don't think I did any damage. There's a ring in here. Neat. So this is what it looks like all pulled apart. It's pretty neat. Now I, I must admit, this is probably something I wouldn't recommend anyone do. And I could have actually ruined it. I, I don't know. This could have done damage to it. Uh, I, I tried my best to keep it off of the coils and the windings, but it looks pretty neat. That's what the inside looks like. Let me get a flashlight on that. So just a giant, AC motor. It's pretty neat. Now I know a lot of scrappers would use a, an air chisel and blow this apart to get all the copper out. I'm not interested in doing any of that. So if you want this as a project, I don't even know what you'd do with it. It's here. I'm not gonna throw it in the scrap bin. Here's what that side looks like. I'm not, I mean, I could, I could knock this cover off, I suppose, but I don't think that's gonna let us see anything other than the harness side of the windings, that's it. Oh, what the hell. Does that not fit in that? Oh, that doesn't fit that. They really don't want you to take that part apart. I have a thinner wall socket now. I think that's it. This probably just comes right off nice and easy. Probably could have taken this side off way easier. Oh, I got a little harness connector to deal with over here. Oh, this, this connector is seriously stuck. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I could unbolt whatever this sensor is. Yeah, that'll do it. I think there's a uh, dowel pin over on this side. You know what? This, let's flip it. Well, apparently it still had coolant in it. Neat. All right. While that's taking a whiz, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't continue continuing on this thing. If I
That seems to do a thing or two. I know that you can come off. There's just a, a dowel right here. The last thing here. Seems like this thing's getting a second wind. Let's try some more violence. That seems to be doing a trick. Yeah. Don't you go falling in that. Ooh, colorful. So here's what this side of the coil looks like. It's pretty neat. I, I gotta say, this is the first time I've had one of these apart. I've seen videos, but I've never seen one this far down in the flesh. And there's really not much to it. It's pretty simple. I don't really see any discernible damage or wear unless I caused it, which is entirely possible. This certainly wasn't a normal video for this channel, but I'm actually trying to change what normal looks like. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop tearing down blown up engines because we all know people aren't getting better at taking care of their vehicles and cars aren't getting easier to work on and they're certainly not getting more reliable. So as long as I have my fingers and toes and my tools in my shop, I will have a new engine teardown video every single week, Saturday nights, Sunday morning, depending on what part of the world you reside. But for my midweek videos, well, I've been kind of slacking on my personal fleet of projects. I have been working on them, but I just haven't posted any videos or not many, and I need to get better about that. I've been kind of preoccupied with a few big projects that I will be announcing in due time. Aside from my personal stuff though, we get wrecked cars in every single week, stuff that's been flooded, and you guys seem to like this stuff coming back to life, even if it's just for a few moments so that we can test the drivetrain so I feel better about selling it. You guys like seeing some of these revivals, as well as stepping outside the box a little bit. Now, I, I can tell you that the opportunity to find more EV drivetrain to tear down is really not there. It doesn't mean that it doesn't go bad or that I can't find it if I really hunt for it, but I don't buy hybrids, let alone EVs here, because I sell parts to the enthusiast community predominantly. Most of the vehicles I have are specialty cars. They're not exotics. They're just the cool version of normal cars. And that's my market. That's what I know. And I like to stay in my lane. A lot of the shops that I deal with, the other yards I deal with, they all buy stuff that's not electrified, not yet. So as of this moment, finding another one of these drivetrains is probably not going to happen for quite some time. So when I found this, I jumped all over it. I didn't buy this with the intent to sell parts and make money. I bought this with the intent to provide a cool video for everyone that watches this channel. And I hope I succeeded today. But if you would like to buy anything out of this for whatever reason or if you'd like to buy parts off of any of the engines i've torn down in the past or if you want parts off of this seven thousand mile yes you heard me correct this has seven thousand miles on it it's a five speed 06 solstice i'm gonna leave our email in the video description you can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory i've been uploading our parts cars multiple times a week lately because i've been jamming more cars through the shop we are out of space here. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.